All right, continuing off the tail end of the last video we covered, um, enums and then matching, they gave an example of how we should be using if let in some cases of matching. Um, they told us an example of why we should be using it, but they didn't, they didn't go into detail. That is this video, that is this section, let's get it. Concise control flow with if let. The if let syntax lets you combine if and let into a less verbose way to handle values that match one pattern while ignoring the rest. Consider the program in listing 6-6 -6 that matches on an option U8 value but only wants to execute code if the value is 3. So here we have that here. And let me just write some of this out. We don't need this anymore. We can write this in our main. So consider let some u8 value equal sum, which is already in the namespace. We don't have to import it. And they wrote 0u8. I guess it's how you'd write one that's explicit. OK. 0u is probably the encoding, and 8 is the value of the integer, which is unsigned. OK. Now we were to mat some u8 value. The options go from 0 to 255, but we only care about one value in this case, which is 3. So if sum is equal to 3, we want to do print 3. For all other options, we don't care. So we're going to do this and have this thing here, which does nothing. We want to do something with the sum 3 mat, but do nothing with any other sum uh, u8 value or the none value. To satisfy the match expression, we have to add the underscore placeholder for everything that hasn't been matched yet to be matched, and the uh, parentheses, which is a unit type that seemingly means do nothing. After processing just one variant, which is a lot of boilerplate code to add, instead we could write this in a shorter way using if let. The following code behaves the same as the match. So instead of writing this, we could have just written if let sum three equal sum value and then do the print. Which makes sense. This is much simpler, much more straightforward. We want to care about one case. So if this is true, let Define it. Is it a define? No, it doesn't seem like a define. The syntax if let takes a pattern and an expression separated by an equal sign. It takes a pattern and an expression separated by an equal sign. Okay, so one is the pattern, seemingly this, and one is the expression, seemingly this, separated by an equal sign. It works the same way as a match, where the expression is given to the match and the pattern is its first arm. I see. I see. Okay. If using if let means less typing, less indentation, and less boilerplate code. However, you lose the exhaustive checking that match enforces. Choosing between match and if let depends on what you're doing in a particular situation and whether gaining conciseness is oh yeah and whether gaining conciseness is an appropriate trade-off for losing exhaustive checking. In other words, you can think of if let as sugar syntax for a match that runs code when the value matches one pattern and then ignores all other values. We can include an else with an if let the block of code that goes with else is the same as the block of code that would go with the underscore case in the match expression that is equivalent to the if let and else. We call the coin enum defined in listing 6-4, where the quarter variant also held a state 
US state value. If we wanted to count all non-quarter coins we see while also announcing the state of the quarters, we could do that with a match expression like this. Uh, so they were going back in the coin example, let mutable count zero, match coin, coin quarter state, so that arm explicitly, prints out the state which we had before, and then returns, oh no, it prints out the state and that's all it does. And then all the other coins can get counted. So everything, anything that doesn't match a quarter will come down here and this count, which is mutable, will be plus one. Okay, I can understand that. And then this can be written as an if else, like this. The mutable count is still there. And we have if let coin, if the coin is equal to state, if the coin is equal to a quarter and it has a state, then do this, else do this. So these two things, this and this are equivalent. If you have a situation in which your program has logic that is too verbose to express using a match, remember that if let is in your Rust toolbox as well. So if let is just another option if you think match is too verbose for that situation, but they can both accomplish the same thing. Well, no, if let can accomplish a type of match, but match is more exhaustive and expressive and I guess safer. Summary, we have now covered how to use enums to create custom types that can be one of a set of enumerated values. We've shown how to, we've shown how the standard library option T type helps you use the type system to prevent errors. When enum values have data inside them, you can use match or if let to extract and use those values depending on how many cases you need to handle. Your Rust program can now express concepts in your domain using structs and enums, creating custom types to use in your API, ensure type safety. Creating custom types to use in your API ensures type safety. The compiler will make certain your functions get only values of the type each function expects. Okay, um, I could just reiterate that because I don't, that one sentence says what they mean, but it wasn't all that explicit. What they're saying is that when you're writing a program um, for a type safety, if you create your own types, uh, then their program can only use those certain types that you've listed or explicitly wrote, written out. However, if you just use primitives or things that are defined someplace else, then it's possible that you make a data that you're not expecting because it didn't adhere to what you assume to be your type. In order to provide a well-organized API to your users that is straightforward to use and only exposes exactly what your user will need. Now let's turn to Rust modules. Oh, so they're saying that the next chapter is going over modules and that's going to be how we give access to, give users access to our API and decide what we want to keep private or what we want to make available to them. Okay, next session, let's just double check. Packages, crates, and modules. Cool. Well, that's all for this video. I hope it was useful. I hope it was entertaining. Um, outside of that, peace.